What does a realistic tier list look like for the casual player? There's a big problem when it comes to tier lists, and we're even guilty of it ourselves. When skill capped, Venruki, or Supatis make our rankings, we're thinking of the game from the perspective of players who want to reach the highest ratings. But the reality is that less than 1% of the PvP player base will ever achieve these ratings. Instead, during an average season, over 50% of players will be at or below Challenger, and the game that's played at Challenger and below is way different than the top 1%. Some classes that are busted at Duelist and above are statistically worse for the rest of the ladder. This is the exact problem we're trying to solve. To do this, we had hundreds of players create their own tier lists, then analyzed a bunch of data from WoW arena logs, including win percentages, damage output, and even death rates in solo shuffle from combatant to rival ratings. We then used all of this information to make a more granular tier list all the way from S to E tier because the lower you go in rating, the more you have to rely on the individual strengths of a spec. So with the help of data and from you, the community, we will find out what a realistic tier list looks like for the average solo player. But first, if you want to master PvP fast and hit your rating goals, then you need to check out our amazing Academy courses where we've designed every video with one goal, to teach you the fundamentals that actually matter in PvP. This includes things like positioning, avoiding tunnel vision, how to carry with CC, or even learning the unique play styles of the world's best players. Our academy section is just a fraction of what we offer at Skillcapped. And no matter what, we will back you up with a rating gain guarantee where we promise that you will see rating gains while actively using our website. We even offer a 30 day, no questions asked money back guarantee for those of you who just want to try us out. So after this video, be sure to click the link below for an exclusive discount to get started. For now, back to the tier list. As you go down in rating, caster DPS get punished the hardest. If we look at the first blood statistics between 1400 and 1800, eight out of the top 10 specs are ranged DPS, which means if you are a caster, there's a very high chance that you will be trained every lobby. And on the flip side, melee on average are doing more damage compared to casters. So if you play ranged DPS, not only are you dying more, but there's a good chance you will have less overall impact on the game. Because of this, we have to shift the majority of our ranged tier list down, where now a lot of specs will actually be at least one tier lower with a few exceptions. Because of its low skill floor and relative strength in the meta, Beast Mastery is the only spec that moves up on our ranged tier list. What defines the strength of BM in Arena is consistent damage, where it ranks second in overall DPS for every ranged spec. You might think that BM hunters are squishy and this would punish them at lower ratings, but going back to first blood stats, Beast Mastery Hunter actually has one of the lowest death rates in Solo Shuffle. And remember, having a low death rate means less likely to be trained, which gives you more freedom to carry. Hunters are also one of the only range specs with a long duration instant cast form of CC, which together completes their toolkit and enables them to be less reliant on their partners for controlling the pace of the game. In lobbies from combatant to rival ratings, being able to effortlessly harass the enemy healer with CC is a massive benefit. And even in longer, higher dampening games, the raw damage output of BM Hunter can easily overwhelm enemy teams, making this spec a great choice for the average player. Devastation Evoker also remains a great option, despite being considered a squishy DPS with a moderately high win rate. So how could we possibly justify keeping Devastation on the high tiers? Looking at damage data, Devastation ranks highest on burst damage with a significant lead over other ranged specs. This should come as no surprise if you've been playing Arena this season. The Devastation Burst window is arguably the scariest thing you will encounter in Solo Shuffle, and the sheer amount of AoE damage dealt during this time can lead to some easy wins, especially against lower rated players who are less likely to make efficient trades. And with repeated buffs to Disintegrate, Devastation is putting up really good numbers for sustained DPS. Overall, any defensive flaws of Dev Evoker are easily offset by its impressive damage toolkit, which is why it stays in the high tiers. While Demonology Warlock doesn't have a scary burst window anymore, it is essentially a pseudo BM Hunter, with both specs having similar win rates, with Demo trailing slightly behind on DPS while also having a higher death rate. Destro Warlock is also still a high tier in lower MMR. This spec might have a high death rate, meaning it's more likely to be trained, but that's because Destro Warlocks are often the most dangerous targets in every lobby, and no matter what rating you play, you're probably going to be the one getting hit all game which is actually less of a problem compared to other casters since the overwhelming majority of Destro damage is instant cast. Warlocks in general are pretty good options for someone wanting to play a pure caster DPS. While they lack the mobility of a mage, they are passively tankier and have one of the strongest low cooldown defensives in the entire game, 
which conveniently can also be used while stunned, requiring less proactive play compared to the other specs. And this is one reason why Mage is universally worse at lower ratings. While it has an amazing defensive kit in the right hands, the class has to rely significantly more on mobility and proactive defensive play in order to survive. But defensive play isn't their only issue. As a much more obvious problem is damage output, where every mage spec ranks incredibly low. Frost is likely the strongest overall option for most mage players, due to having one of the best burst windows combined with a well-rounded defensive kit, with Arcane being in a close second, being limited by its single spell school, and Fire, which is just a victim class because of Glass Cannon. While mages at any rating might be annoying to play against because of their seemingly endless snares, the class really struggles to carry in lower MMR lobbies. In order to truly do well on a mage, you need to play with a bit more finesse, taking advantage of very small burst windows while getting bullied for the rest of the game. This requires having teammates that will actively support your limitations, which is going to be quite rare in lower rated lobbies. Finally, Shadow Priest is likely one of the weakest specs at lower MMR, being a quintessential victim class in most lobbies. After some major nerfs in 10.2, Shadow has really struggled to find its identity in virtually every form of content having subpar damage output while also having a pretty high death rate, which means being a priority target in most lobbies. On paper, Shadow Priest might have a lot of utility, but at lower ratings, utility is more difficult to benefit from since your teammates can be less predictable, where instead, raw damage output is usually what carries the hardest. Anyway, between mages and our high tiers, the B tier is pretty stacked, and Augmentation Evoker is still the weakest overall at all ratings, but being exceptionally bad at low MMR. But now, let's break down the remaining specs one by one. First up is Mark's Hunter, which had a rocky start to the season, but after some recent damage buffs is still a good option for most players, landing comfortably on the B tier. Mark's has a higher death rate compared to BM, since it can actually get shut down while being trained by double melee. That's why Beast Mastery is generally a better option, since it suffers minimal damage loss while under pressure. Despite this, we still think Mark's is a great option simply because of its burst damage potential being combined with its great CC kit. If you can consistently land traps and burst at the right times, you will climb as a Marks Hunter. In a similar boat is Boomkin. There should be no argument that Balanced Druid has one of the best offensive cooldowns for solo shuffle, with Incarnation having a big impact no matter what the rating, and with Root Beam also being a very convenient form of crowd control against most of the healing cast. The main issue, once again, is survivability and playing under pressure, where Balance has the second highest death rate for all ranged specs. This means Boomkins are more likely to be trained while not passively being tanky enough to tank the damage. This means Balanced Druids need to land defensive Cyclones frequently while also needing to weave in and out of bear form, responding quickly to the damage patterns of the enemy team. Our last two specs are both big pumpers but lack the ability to control the game. First up is Affliction Warlock, who we think is probably still the weakest Warlock spec of the three at lower ratings. Affliction has the possibility to have a huge impact in many lobbies, but it's often just a victim class against high tier melee. The spec has the highest overall DPS in the bracket, but this doesn't always translate to wins. Unlike BM Hunter who can slam damage under pressure while also landing CC, Affliction Warlock is much more reliant on its partners to help close out games, and as a spec that relies exclusively on dots, there is a higher chance at getting griefed by your own partners with dot removing CCs. Elemental Shaman is remarkably similar, boasting impressive overall damage numbers, but easily becoming a target in many lobbies. Just like Shadow Priest, Ellie has great utility on paper, but again, at these ratings, your utility is less impactful compared to raw kill power, and this is where Elemental has a similar problem to Affliction. Sure, the spec can put on some impressive sustained numbers, but unless you want to play a gimmicky Lava Burst build, you'll be at the whim of your partners to close out games. With every spec covered, these are the final rankings for ranged DPS at lower MMR. Becoming better at kiting and dealing damage under pressure are probably the best things you can do at this rating. And if you watched our recent video on why damage is the number one driver for MMR, simply dealing more damage is all it takes to climb. That's why at the start of each season, we also make sure to update our damage guides before anything else. Right now, you can find 10.2 damage guide updates for every DPS on our site where we guide you through what your spec damage goals are in an arena setting, and what your sustained damage and burst rotation is, before showing you exactly what your opener should look like, which sets you up perfectly to enjoy the rest of our comprehensive damage, defensive play, and crowd control courses. Learn more with the link in the description. Anyway, most people would expect that casters have a tougher time in solo shuffle at lower ratings, but is the same true for melee? Well, not exactly. 
Some melee will suffer problems at lower ratings, like having weak passive defense, lower consistent pressure, or being too reliant on short burst windows to land kills. This is why it shouldn't surprise you that Havoc Demon Hunter is high on our list, joining tanky, durable melee on the high tiers, while squishier, cooldown reliant DPS will, on average, be much worse. With its current strength, Havoc is a spec designed to carry by itself, having both high consistent damage, incredible mobility, and a very long burst window through metamorphosis. This is confirmed by arena data where Demon Hunter leads an overall DPS for all melee. As we recently found out, Demon Hunters at lower ratings actually do very comparable damage to high-rated players. When this damage is paired with multiple instant cast CC options, Demon Hunters can easily set up kills by themselves, locking down healer, and kill targets without having to rely as much on their partners. DH is also one of the few melees with a complete damage immunity, which is a really big deal at lower ratings, where getting defensive support can be unpredictable. Overall, you really can't go wrong playing at Demon Hunter at any rating especially at lower MMR, where it is a powerhouse of damage ready to overwhelm enemy healers. Now you might think that Unholy DK would be better at lower MMR due to its incredible burst window, and there is no doubt that openers against DKs can be quite intense, with everyone taking loads of AoE damage. But once this big opener is over, DK damage really falls off. This can be a bigger issue in lower rated lobbies, where it's now up to the DK to build pressure without relying on its cooldowns being highly disruptive with timing precise micro CC to regain momentum. While Demon Hunters have the luxury of zooming around the map, DKs are more limited on mobility, adding a layer of complexity that gates them from the highest tier. Unlike some of the other high tiers, Arms Warrior doesn't really excel at anything. Instead, its strength across all ratings is the fact that Arms has a good base stat across the board, with an above average win rate, good consistent damage, and a low death rate. The biggest difference between ARMS and some of our other high tiers is that it comes equipped with more utility. Now we know throughout this video, we've said utility is less important at low MMR, but unlike other specs, ARMS Warrior can do enough pressure on its own that any utility is just extra credit. The last spec in our high tiers is Windwalker Monk, which is actually a tier lower compared to our normal rankings. Right now, Monk actually has the highest burst damage out of any melee. But this doesn't come for free, since its death rate is higher compared to our other tiers. While Windwalker has plenty of defensive cooldowns, they are generally lower impact compared to other major defensives and need to be used more carefully since monks have much weaker passive durability. While the rest of the high tiers include plate-wearing tanks or Illidan mini-bosses, monks can struggle with surviving unless played extremely well. Even though our top tiers are quite similar to high MMR, we see a lot of specs dropping off below with Rogue seeing the biggest losses overall. Assassination, Outlaw, and Sub are all relatively worse at lower MMR, but for different reasons. While Sub has the best control in Arena by far, it's much harder to get value out of CC in lower rated lobbies. Higher rated Rogues seem to breeze through games, but in doing so, they are relying on lots of game knowledge, intuition, and careful DR management, which we don't really see at lower ratings. Universally, Rogue is a class with a higher skill floor, which means less skilled players will struggle to fully utilize its toolkit. While Outlaw might be widely considered one of the best specs in the game currently, we think it has the biggest drop off at lower ratings, and anecdotally, we've all had lobbies with and against Outlaw Rogues where they seem to do nothing all game. And even though it might have the lowest win rate, we still think Assassination has good potential at lower MMR simply because its damage output is very consistent as long as you can avoid Evokers, Survival Hunters, and Paladins. Speaking of which, we think Rhett is also a bit worse at lower ratings. Of course, in Season 1, this spec absolutely dominated Arena after a major rework. But since then, Rhett has really fallen back across the board, having one of the lowest win rates in the game. After repeated nerfs, Rhett Paladin damage is just less impactful compared to previous seasons, which means relying more on utility to carry, which we should know by now, is not that reliable. Moving down on our list, Survival Hunter will also be a bit weaker at lower MMR. While having a similar defensive toolkit to the other two Hunter specs, Survival has the added difficulty of being a pseudo melee, which leaves it more exposed to more damage at all times. At the end of the day, Survival can still carry in lobbies with its damage and control, and as long as you can consistently land CC chains and do a good job avoiding damage, you will see rating gains at lower MMR. Next up is Fury Warrior, which is one of the only mid-tier melees that doesn't get worse at lower ratings. Across the board, Fury is just a weaker version of ARMS, but is arguably easier to play due to having less responsibilities. This allows Fury Warriors to focus more on damage, but as a result gives him less overall impact on the game. The only other melee mid-tier that doesn't get worse at lower MMR is Frost DK, 
and there is even an argument that they are even better at lower ratings. This is because Frost DKs have one of the strongest burst windows in the game, and in the rare chance you've encountered a Frost DK lobby this season, you probably experienced this yourself. The sheer amount of damage done on the first go can easily overwhelm less experienced healers, and is even a big threat at higher MMR. So if you can nail your setups, Frost DK could actually be better than the C tier. But for now, we will be keeping it here until it puts out more convincing win rates. The last remaining spec on the C tier is Enhancement Shaman. And if you've watched the entire video up to this point, it's easy to see why. But if not, Enhance has the second highest death rate in Solo Shuffle, meaning there is a high chance it will be targeted all game. This added pressure can be difficult to deal with, especially considering shamans really don't offer much outside of damage. With limited CC options, it's difficult to carry most lobbies, especially while lacking high impact utility. Universally, shamans really aren't expected to do well in solo shuffle, but at least they aren't the worst melee. Instead, that title belongs to Feral Druid. Of all the melee in the game, Feral is definitely the worst at lower ratings due to having an insanely high skill floor while also being easily punished in the current meta. With the highest melee death rate, your chance at being the kill target as a Feral Druid is astronomically high. And despite recent buffs to regrowth healing, it doesn't seem like Feral survivability is getting any better. This forces Feral Druids into this really awkward playstyle where they need to land Cyclones for damage, but expose themselves in human form every time they do. So while Feral has the potential to do a lot of damage, it's going to spend the majority of the game getting harassed which is not a good thing for less experienced players at lower MMR. Once again, our high tiers are mostly the same to our regular tier list, but for our mid and low tiers, there is definitely some drop off. No matter what your melee spec actually needs you to focus on though, we've got you covered over at skillcaps.com. If damage is key, you can find our 10.2 damage guide updates for every melee where you can learn what your damage goals are, what your sustained and burst DPS rotations are, and how to play the opener. If defense is what you need most, we've also got you covered there with our comprehensive defensive play courses. And if better crowd control is what you need to get to the next level, we've got you covered there too. So be sure to check out the link in the description after this. Now moving on to healers. They are universally going to struggle more at lower ratings. This is why the healer role is so counterintuitive, because the game actually becomes easier as you climb in rating as your teammates become better at adjusting defensively. This is why some healers will actually be moving an entire tier down since universally you are more at the whim of your partner's mistakes. But there is one exception. Disc Priest is the only healer that is relatively better at lower MMR. If you watched our recent solo shuffle tier list, we actually dropped Disc all the way down to B tier, since at higher ratings, their output is clearly falling behind other healers. But at lower MMR, where there is less damage output, Disc healing doesn't feel as limited, and instead the spec can become a wall of defensive cooldowns. The sheer amount of defensives in the Disc Priest kit allows you to have way more control over the fate of your partners, who you can't always trust to trade a defensive. And despite being nerfed in the 10.2 patch, Disc Priest damage can actually have a marginal impact over games. Less damage output from the enemy team means being able to rely more on atonement healing, allowing priests to actually carry in lobbies. And speaking of being a wall of defensives, we're also keeping Holy Paladins in the high tiers. We've seen comments that Holy Paladins suck. But if we look at the data, Holy Paladins actually have the highest win rate of any healer between Combatant and Rival. This is likely due to the strength of Holy Paladin externals, which are going to help carry their weaker HPS, since there is less damage to deal with at lower MMR. So just like Disc, Pallies can actually wall out enemy kill windows with the press of a few buttons. And ironically, this is why Resto Druids are the only high tier healer who actually get weaker at lower MMR. Having a worse win rate than both Discipline Priest and Holy Paladin within the same rating bracket at 49%. While Priests and Paladins are walls of cooldowns, Druids are just a wall of healing. But as we just discussed, the value of healing will be worse at lower ratings because there is less damage to heal. And while it could be argued that Resto Druids can have high impact with CC in most lobbies, you have to understand that pushing for Cyclones can easily backfire exposing the druid to swaps or CC chains, which can easily become game losing. So with our high tier sorted, let's move back down the tier list to explain the rest of our rankings. First up is Resto Shaman, who we've placed on the B tier for now, but could see arguments for higher placements. Shaman actually has the second highest win rate of any healer between combatant and rival, beating out both Disc Priest and Resto Druid. The main reason we're hesitating to move Shaman any higher is because it's a relatively complicated healer to play, and not for the reason you think. The truth is that healing on a Shaman is pretty straightforward, 
and the majority of your healing output is going to come from three spells. The true learning curve of Resto Shaman is mastering all of the non-healing responsibilities that you have, which includes being a highly disruptive or sometimes aggressive healer, assisting with CC, interrupts, and even damage. Shaman has the ability to be highly impactful in lower MMR lobbies, but it requires a bit of nuance, which is why we're keeping it on the B tier for now. On the flip side, one healer that definitely does not have the ability to carry offensively is the conventional Mistweaver Monk. We will cover Fistweaver in a moment, and spoiler alert, we think it's actually bad at lower ratings. Anyway, Caster Monks are basically just weaker versions of Resto Druids. They can wall out the enemy team with HPS, but outside of Life Cocoon, they really lack any high impact defensives. For similar reasons, that's why Holy Priest ranks lower than Disc. While Holy does have some strong CDs, it simply has less of them compared to Disc and is even more limited by spell schools. This forces Holy Priest to play more passively, since a single interrupt or CC chain can easily lose the game, which is why Holy can be less forgiving at lower MMR. And now you may be wondering, how could Fistweaver possibly be bad at lower ratings? I mean, Ancient Teachings was recently buffed, right? How could Fistweaver be worse if it has so much carry potential? You have to remember that Fistweaver is basically two roles in one. It is a melee DPS and a healer at the same time. This means you not only have to play with your team, but you are constantly exposed to CC or swaps the entire game. And as a lower rated player, these are difficult execution tests to deal with, especially since you are less likely to get defensive support. On paper, Fistweaver has the most potential out of any healer to carry at lower MMR, but that assumes it's being piloted by an experienced player. If you are just starting out as a healer in solo shuffle, playing Fistweaver might actually be one of the worst specs to choose, since it can easily be punished without good defensive play. The only other healer that is arguably worse than Fistweaver at lower ratings is Preservation Evoker. Of all the healing specs, Preservation has the lowest win rate up to rival ratings. And if you've ever played Preservation, you can probably guess why. It is one of the easiest healers to grief. With limited range and cone-based healing, it becomes more difficult to play at lower ratings where DPS are less likely to respect your positioning. Just like Fistweaver, Evoker has a lot of potential to carry, either with CC, damage, or disruption but probably has one of the steepest learning curves for any healer, which is why we wouldn't recommend it at lower ratings, especially for a beginner. That brings us back to our adjusted healer rankings for the average solo player. With its wall of CDs, Disc Priest and Holy Paladins will likely be your best bets for the grind up to rival, with Druids trailing closely behind. And remember, if you watched our recent video on the best way to increase rating, you already know that healers see the biggest rating gains from increasing throughput. And just like the 10.2 damage updates every DPS spec got, we also have 10.2 healing updates over at skillcap.com for every healer spec. The evidence shows that HPS equals rating, and our healing courses take you through the A to Z of what's needed to heal, just like a rank 1 pro. No matter your class and spec though, everyone gets to enjoy our rating gain guarantee, where we promise that you will see rating gains while actively using our website, or you get your money back. Alright guys, that about does it for this one. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of this tier list. Does it feel more like the arena you experience? We'd love to hear your thoughts. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.